And looks like researchers discovered something else super exciting on the outskirts of the solar system. We officially have a new dwarf planet that despite being relatively small and despite having somewhat common properties, presents us with something really important when it comes to the search for the mysterious Planet 9. The object you see right here referred to as 2017 OF201 may potentially suggest Planet 9 does not actually exist after all. Or in other words, this is the first official evidence for the non-existence of the ninth planet anywhere in the solar system. And so let's discuss this new discovery in more detail. But first, let's briefly discuss dwarf planets. Let's talk about how they connect to the hypothesis behind Planet 9, and then discuss exactly what this object is and why it's important. And here the story starts somewhere in the early 2000s, when because of new telescopes, researchers started to discover a lot of these somewhat bizarre objects. Initially, it was Eris, discovered in 2003, but then a few additional objects that eventually caused Pluto to lose its planetary status. Mostly because researchers realized that Pluto seems to be just one of many similar objects that we now refer to as TNOs, trans-Neptunian objects, with some of them that are large enough to be spherical, eventually becoming dwarf planets. And in the last 20 years, quite a few of them have been discovered, with many different sizes and different orbits. But then, at some point, as the researchers were discovering more and more, approximately 10 years ago, several scientists realized that there appeared to be a kind of a pattern. And specifically, a pattern when it comes to the inclination and the eccentricity, which seemed to suggest an unusual clustering that would be very difficult to produce by chance. And this eventually led to the proposition that all of this was a result of some kind of an invisible planet X, or basically Planet 9. The ninth official planet in the solar system that was now suggested to orbit somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system, possibly as far away as 500 AU or 500 astronomical units. And in this case, this would be maybe smaller than Neptune, possibly some kind of a mini Neptune, or maybe a super Earth. With its existence actually solving quite a lot of mysteries and quite a lot of problems when it comes to the solar system. For example, it would finally explain why mini Neptunes and super Earths have been previously detected in all of the other star systems, but not the solar system. In this case, maybe it was just much farther away. And so in essence, the Planet 9 proposition was mostly used to explain gravitational anomalies and clustering in a lot of different trans-Neptunian objects, including many different dwarf planets. You can actually see some of them right here. But to be more exact, a lot of these are actually ETNOs, extreme trans-Neptunian objects. Several previously discovered minor planets whose distance from the Sun is on average at least 150 AU and that often contain very eccentric orbits. Orbits that could not have been created this way by Neptune alone. Or in other words, it's basically impossible for any of these objects to have these orbits just because of the influence from Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus or Saturn. It had to be something else. Which is why the invisible planet 9 made the most sense. And extremely recently, in at least two different videos, we've discussed the potential discovery of something out there that has not been officially proven yet. You can learn about this in some of the videos in the description, but something seems to be out there. We just don't really know what. It could be a planet, it could be some kind of a different object, or it could be, once again, some kind of a statistical anomaly. But this was based on some of the previous discoveries from approximately maybe 10 years ago. As the years gone by, and as scientists discovered more and more TNOs, and even ETNOs, something else started to appear. Or, I guess, something else started to disappear. The previously reported orbital clustering did not seem to appear in a lot of these new objects. Or basically, a lot of the additional TNOs and ETNOs discovered in the last 5 or 6 years or so seem to actually not really match the same orbital parameters. And so, as of 2025, the official TNO catalog contains at least 1,006 numbered minor planets, with 4,000 unnumbered ones, or basically nearly 6,000 different objects that orbit over 30 astronomical units away from the Sun. And quite a few of them don't seem to show any signs of influence from any invisible planet at all. And so some of the recent studies suggested that maybe these previous assumptions were based on some kind of a bias, or something else that researchers still don't really understand. But none of these discoveries definitively proved anything yet. As a matter of fact, additional observations from other star systems, like the one you see right here, even showed us definitively that planets, similar to Planet 9, do exist around other stars, 
An orbit very far from the star with high inclination and high eccentricity. So basically it was possible and there was nothing to suggest that it doesn't exist. But in this case, the telltale sign for the existence or non-existence of this planet would not just come from any dwarf planet, it would have to come from one of these ETNOs. One of these extreme trans-Neptunian objects whose orbit is very far from the star. One of the most famous ones is Sedna. A dwarf planet we discussed many times before that's roughly around 1000 kilometers in size and moves away from the sun as far away as 937 astronomical units every 12,000 years. And so this is actually a really extreme orbit. But it was similar objects that could potentially tell us what's going on in the solar system and if there's something hiding there after all. And to date, only 12 minor planets with a very large orbit have been officially confirmed. Now we got our next one. And this one is super important. And first of all, the orbit. Here a single orbit takes approximately 25,000 years and the shape of the orbit is super eccentric. At its closest, this object approaches the Sun at 45 AU, very close to Pluto. But at its farthest, which happens every 25,000 years, it seems to move as far as 1600 AU, roughly around 40 times the distance of Pluto to the Sun. And while strangely enough, this bizarre object was at its closest around the same time when Pluto was discovered as well back in 1930s. And so essentially in the 1930s, this strange dwarf planet was at a very similar distance to the Sun as Pluto. But it was not discovered probably because it's much smaller. At least three times as small as Pluto, approximately 700 kilometers in diameter. But very similar in size and in properties to the other object known as Ixion, also sometimes referred to as anti-Pluto, because its orbit is literally the opposite of Pluto's orbit. And so here is roughly what it would look like compared to Pluto in comparison. But because its size is large enough for this object to become a spherical, it officially meets the requirements to be a dwarf planet. And it meets the requirement to be in this list as well. Although currently it's much farther away, almost 91 astronomical units away from the Sun. And intriguingly in this case, it was actually discovered by accident by going through some of the older observations and some of the historical images captured over approximately seven years. But since eventually researchers discovered 19 separate images, they were basically able to work out the overall orbit. And the orbit in this case is kind of extreme. Here you can actually see these 19 detections from various instruments and from various telescopes. Okay, but let's discuss why this is a really important discovery when it comes to Planet 9. Because of these 19 images, researchers worked out that there is absolutely no way the orbit in this case can match any of the prerequisites for this to be influenced by Planet 9. In other words, this object is not in the clustering family and does not match other ATNOs that were previously used to prove the existence of Planet 9. But much more importantly, since this object exists and since it has this very specific orbit, it's now almost certain that Planet 9 cannot possibly exist in the orbit predicted by previous studies. And here this was modeled several times and by changing several parameters and basically realizing that if there was a planet somewhere out there massive enough to influence other dwarf planets, this particular object would have been ejected within just a few million years, maximum 200 million years. So basically it would not have its current orbit if there was a massive enough object on the outskirts disturbing everything in its way. And so the presence of this one single object dramatically challenges all of the potential propositions about the existence of some kind of a still undetected planet on the outskirts of the solar system. Because any potential planet similar to Neptune or even some kind of a super Earth would have already caused this dwarf planet to be ejected from the solar system long time ago. And overall its orbit seems to hint at some kind of a gravitational interaction not connected to any planet in the solar system but instead connected to something outside. And in this case, the researchers propose that it's probably the result of gravitational tides from the Milky Way itself. And so basically the reason so many of these objects have these very bizarre orbits is possibly created by some kind of an influence from various stellar encounters and the galactic tide itself, which possibly created the scattering of various orbits and the clustering we seem to observe in certain objects. And so it's unlikely to be Planet 9, but it's very likely to be gravitational interaction with everything outside of the solar system. And that doesn't just apply to Planet 9, it seems to apply to any potential planet that has been proposed in the past to possibly explain some of the anomalies in the solar system. In other words, at the moment at least, it looks like maybe there is no ninth planet 
there is no planet X, and there's nothing massive enough to influence dwarf planets, except for, I guess, various stars and the galaxy itself. And although some of the other Trans-Neptunian objects, such as 2013 FT28 and 2015 KG163, also have somewhat difficult to explain orbits, right now this new discovery basically definitively tells us that the only way this planet can exist is literally if there is no planet out there, except for obviously 8 we currently have. Which means that we're back to not really knowing exactly how some of these objects acquired these orbits, and what exactly is causing these very eccentric orbits to begin with, or how any of this works. Now, if it is gravitational interactions with the galaxy and other stars, we don't really have any good explanations right now, or even good models that explain anything. But because this object exists, and because these objects are usually very difficult to find, normally when they're extremely close to the sun, it now implies that quite a few of these objects must be out there, still hiding, still undetected, with maybe hundreds or even thousands, containing similar orbits, similar size, and obviously similar mysteries. But many of them are probably super far away from us, so we're not going to be seeing them anytime soon. Which also suggests that the ETNO population, or the population of these relatively large dwarf planets, super super far away from the sun, is possibly in the hundreds if not thousands, compared to what was previously assumed. But exactly what they look like, and exactly what they have on their surface or inside, is still a bit of a mystery. Now we know that many of them do actually vary in color, and do seem to have slightly different composition, but in general they're usually either grey-blue or extremely red usually the result of the composition of different types of rocks and different types of carbon on the surface. But because many of them, like Pluto, are also covered in methane, or even other organic compounds, generally their composition and their appearance seems to differ quite a lot. And we are unlikely to know exactly what any of these distant objects look like anytime soon. And so when it comes to this particular object, chances are we're going to be hearing more about this in the next few months, just because this is such an important discovery when it comes to the search for Planet 9. And until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon that now contains a lot of unreleased videos and additional footage, support this channel by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.